Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to go over the uh, practice quiz for the uh, Organic Chemistry 2 lab. It should be timestamped, so you can switch to whichever question that you want. And I'm going to get started right away with the first question. So it says, match the following compounds with their IR spectrum. Give the reasoning um, and evidence for the spectrum for each match. And answers should include peak identifications and characteristic wave numbers for each peak. Okay, so what the way I would kind of tackle this problem, we have uh, some different compounds, we have some different IRs. It's going to get a little challenging because I'm noticing now it doesn't all fit on the same screen. Um, we're going to go ahead and try to identify these things. So the first thing that I would say here is that we have a um, broad peak uh, around somewhere around 3,500. This is characteristic of an OH. So you're going to have an OH somewhere around I don't know, 36 to 3300 centimeters to the minus one. All right, here is going to be a CH aromatic, and that's going to be slightly above 3000 to the centimeters to the minus one. Notice I'm not writing down the characteristic peaks. Uh, I'm just labeling the peaks. You should probably write them down. So this is, you know, I don't know, 36 to 3,300 uh, centimeters to minus one, or even 3,200 centimeters to minus one. This one is just above 3,000 centimeters to minus one. All right, and in this case, we have a CH aliphatic. All right, so that means a non-aromatic uh, CH. And if we look down here, we have no C double bond O. Uh, this is a C double bond C. You don't really need to label that because it's close to the fingerprint region. So if I look here, this is pretty easy to identify. Because if we look here, the only one that has an aromatic CH is, is choice letter A. is the only one with a ring, and it's the only one with peaks above 3,000. So this has to be choice letter A. Now let's look at um, choice the second one okay so if you look here there's no oh peak all right we have these ch's but these ch's are non-aromatic but unfortunately that's not enough to identify these two because if we look here neither one of them has an aromatic ring but this peak this broad peak around 1700 centimeters to the minus one this is going to be your c double bond o your carbonyl peak. If we look at these two things, the only one that has a carbonyl, C double bond O, is choice letter B. Now, for the last one, I'm just going to rewrite the um, structure down a little bit lower because you won't be able to see it otherwise. So this is the only one that's left, and this obviously has to be C just by process of elimination. So <laughs> that C looks like a carbon, so I'm going to put it a little, little lower. All right, in this case, we have an NNH peak here. Okay, we have a CH non aromatic or aliphatic here. Okay, and we have no C double bond L. So the presence of the NH and the um, CH aliphatic allows us to know that this one is letter C. All right, it says, which functional group is consistent with the um, IR spectrum below? So there's a lot of ways to tackle this, but the most important thing that I wanna point out to you for this question is you need to know what the functional groups are. All right, so a carboxylic acid has a C double bond O and an OH. An ether has a carbon attached to an O, attached to another carbon, and this carbon is attached to three other things. Okay, and this carbon is attached to one other thing. And alcohol is a carbon attached to an OH, and that carbon is attached to other things. And a ketone is a C double bond O, and that's attached to other things that contain carbon. Okay, it can't be an H, otherwise that's called an aldehyde. So that's going to be your ketone. So the, these are our functional groups. Note that these are not the only possible functional groups you could be asked about on the test. So make sure you're familiar with your functional groups. So let's take a look at here. Here, we have this broad peak. Okay, this is going to be an OH. Here, we have a CH aliphatic. Note that none of these says um aromatic ring okay so this doesn't really matter but we can identify it and if we look here we have a c double bond o the only one of these functional groups that contains both a c double bond o and an oh is carboxylic acid the alcohol would have the oh peak and the ketone would have the c double bond o but the only one that would have both is your carboxylic acid all right it says which technique um, can be used to distinguish between samples of isomers shown below. 
So in this case, we have um, dimethyl ether, and in this case, we have ethanol. So the first answer is um, proton NMR spectroscopy. So if you look here, in this case, this is a CH3, and this is a CH3. This is going to be a large singlet, although it would be hard to tell it's large because it's the only one there. This is going to have one singlet, okay, shown because these are both separated from each other. If we look at this one, this is a CH3, and this is a CH2. This one's actually going to have three peaks in NMR. This one, this one, and this one. That alone is enough to distinguish them. This one should be a triplet. This one should be a quartet, and this one should be a singlet. This one um, is likely the most downfield, followed probably by this one and then this one. Okay, so these uh, protons um, are going to be, um, excuse me, these compounds are going to be easily distinguishable by proton spectroscopy. What about IR spectroscopy, which is a much cheaper and often easier method to perform? If we look here, in this case, we're not going to see much. We're going to see CH aliphatic. You can actually see this CO, but it's pretty close to the fingerprint region, so it might be hard to distinguish. What about in this one, though? In this one, we're going to have a broad peak for this OH. So this broad peak for this OH, around 3,200 to 36, whoops, 3,600 CM to the minus 1, is going to easily distinguish this alcohol from this ether. So proton spectroscopy and MR spectroscopy, as I talked about before, will um, distinguish them. So will IR spectroscopy. So we're going to choose answer C, which is both methods. All right, this one says, number four, rank protons in the molecule below from highest to lowest chemical shift. Okay, so if we look at a um, NMR spectrum, it's going to look like this, where this is zero. Um, sorry, I've got this backwards here. So this is zero, okay, and this is 12-ish ppm. All right, this edge is called up field. And this one is called downfield. All right, so this is basically what we're looking at. Now, the closer to an electronegative atom that the protons are, the more deshielded they're going to be and the more downfield that they're going to be. So if we were looking at ranking these, okay, the you don't need to know exactly where they are on the scale, but the A protons would be the most downfield because they're closest to the electronegative chlorine. And at the opposite extreme, the D protons would be the most upfield because they're going to be furthest away from the chlorine. So in this case, it's actually going to be A, then B, then C, then D. I don't want to label them on here because they're not going to be exactly like this. Okay, they're not going to be like evenly spaced or something like that. But the relative order is A, then B, then C, then D. And if we look here, um, that will be choice letter A. All right, so question five says, for the following molecule, equivalent protons are labeled with letters. For each equivalent proton, give the expected multiplicity and integration. Okay, so I'm going to make like a little table here, okay, with the multiplicity and the integration like this, and then the label or whatever, A, B, C, D, um, for each of the protons. So first thing to notice is we have two, 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 three. Two and threes don't have a common multiple. So said another way, the integrations here are going to be absolute. All right. They're not going to be, um, you know, divided all by two or divided all by three when there's a common multiple. So the integrations are going to be two to two to two to three. So for A, it's going to be two simply because it has two protons. What about the multiplicity? For the multiplicity, you want to look at the adjacent carbons. In this case, this one only has one adjacent carbon. This has two hydrogens on it. Since this has two hydrogens, we're going to have a multiplicity of n plus 1 or 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 means we're going to have a triplet. Okay. Let's look at B. B has two protons, so it's going to have an integration of 2. Let's look at the adjacent carbons. In this case, we have two adjacent carbons. This has two, and this has two, for a total of four. 
So 4 plus 1, or n plus 1, is going to be given to be 5. We could call that a pentet. All right, so we should get a 5 peaks with integration 2. Let's look at c. c is here, also has 2, so it's going to have an integration of 2. Let's look at the um, adjacent carbons. We have 2 protons here and 3 to protons here. 2 and 3 is 5, so n plus 1 is 6. We call that a sextet. Finally, D. D is going to have an integration of 3 because there's 3 protons, so it'll be um, 1.5 times larger, okay, by area as the other ones. If we look here at this uh, particular example, um, the neighboring carbon, it has 2 hydrogens, so these are going to be split by 2 plus 1, which is a total of 3, which gives us another triplet. So this is what we can expect for the integration and multiplicity of these protons in this proton NMR spectrum. All right, this one says, how many peaks will the proton NMR spectrum of the following molecule have? So we're basically asked how many equivalent protons there are. The thing to notice here is we have a methyl group here and a methyl group here. This molecule is called para-xylene. Since these are both methyl groups, or said another way, there's a plane of symmetry through the molecule um, right here, that means that these are equivalent protons. If these are equivalent protons, then it means all of these are equivalent protons. So in this case, we have two sets of equivalent protons. These are A's and these are Bs, but they're all equivalent because of the fact that there's um, symmetry here. You can think of it that way, or you can think of there's a plane of symmetry this way as well. Um, you do have um, symmetry here, uh, so therefore you only have A's and B's. This gives you two types of equivalent protons. Note that if these two groups were not the same, then this would not be the case. But since they're exactly the same and you have that symmetry element, you only have two equivalent types of protons here. That's a bit tricky. All right, this one says, which of the following molecules will produce the proton NMR spectrum given below? Circle your answer. So if we look here, we only have two peaks in the proton NMR spectrum. So therefore, we need to have um, molecules with only two unique types of protons. So if we look here at this one, we have an H here, an H here. Those are not going to be equivalent. An H here, the H here, and the CH3 here. So this one is going to give one, two, three, four, five peaks. It's certainly not going to only give two peaks. All right, let's look at this molecule here. In this case, this is a CH3, this is a CH3, this is a CH3. Those are all, kind of draw a line there, those are all equivalent. Those three methyl groups are all equivalent. If we look here, this carbon already has one, two, three, four bonds, so there is no proton here. Same here. One, two, three, four bonds. There is no proton. On the ether, this oxygen has two lone pairs and no other protons, and we have a CH3 over here. So if we look here, this molecule is only going to have this as one peak, okay, which will also be a singlet because there is no adjacent, there's no protons on the adjacent carbon. And this peak should also be a singlet because there's no uh, protons on the adjacent carbon. There actually isn't an adjacent carbon. So if we look here, this ester molecule is consistent with this spectrum. So this is the answer. Let's look at this one. This one is similar because it has this, these same three equivalent uh, methyl groups. So this would have um, all equivalent protons. There is no proton there. There is no proton there. There is no proton there. But in this case, we have a CH2, CH3. So if we look at this, this should have um, three peaks, first of all. Second of all, this one is going to be split because this one is going to have um, uh, a carbon with three hydrogens. So this is going to be three plus one, which is a multiplicity of four or a quartet. And this one is going to have um, the adjacent carbon having two protons, which is going to give you two plus one, which is a three or a triplet. So here we should see a quartet and a triplet, and we don't see anything that like, looks like that. We only see two singlet, singlets, so we can only have two equivalent protons. This has three, and it doesn't have the right multiplicity either. So we were able to identify this as uh, choice letter B. 
All right, finally, we have which of the following molecules will produce the proton NMR spectrum given below? Circle your answer. So a couple things to notice about this um, proton NMR spectrum. The first things that I notice are this is a singlet, okay? This is most probably a methyl group, all right? Because it's a singlet and it's probably a methyl group not attached to anything um, that has a carbon, uh, excuse me, it's not attached to a carbon with hydrogens uh, that is adjacent. It's probably attached to a carbon, but that carbon probably doesn't have any hydrogens. All right. This, just from experience, tells me we have a para substituted benzene ring. So having these protons between about six and a half and eight tells you that this is coming most likely from an aromatic ring. Having these two doublets like this is indicative of para splitting. Why? Because you have these two being different from these two. And note that it's not only para splitting, it means that this group and this group are not the same. The final one here is this around 10. Uh, signal around 10 is indicative, indicative of an aldehyde. That's one you just kind of have to memorize because it's the only one that appears around 10. So if we look here, we need para splitting. That automatically limits us to C and D. Okay. Um, we also need to have an aldehyde, so this is an aldehyde, this is a ketone, so this is not going to be your answer. Okay, then finally, we need to have this group, which is um, going to be a methyl group that's attached to a carbon that doesn't have any hydrogens. And if we look here, they both have this, but this is the only one that has an aldehyde. For this one, a couple things. One, this peak would have uh, would be bigger relative to the size of these two peaks because it's from three protons instead of one proton. And the other thing is it's next, next to a carbonyl, so you might find it around four, okay? So you might find a peak around right here, but you're certainly not going to find it at 10. So that's what distinguishes your aldehyde. This 10 peak is this H right here. This CH3 would be more around four and not around 10. It still would be a singlet because there are no hydrogens on this carbon, but it would have a much greater relative size to these other peaks. Okay, so your answer here is choice letter C. So that brings us to the end of this uh, practice quiz. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it helps you to uh, prepare for the regular quiz. Don't forget that on the regular quiz you're going to get different examples. Make sure you know your functional groups. Make sure you know your common places where you find things like aldehydes, carboxylic acids, um, aromatic rings, things like that. You know your integration, your splitting, and know your common places where you find um, different uh, IR stretches, such as a broad OH peak between 3200 and 3600, so on and so forth. All the things we covered here, but it also could be the things um, that you covered in class that we didn't quite get to on this, these uh, particular sets of examples. Thanks for watching.